Welcome to Racing Girls Rock podcast. Today, it was my honor to interview a young man that I've been following for quite a while, ever since he was racing quarter midgets um, here at Kalamazoo, Michigan. He's from Portage, Michigan, and he's currently racing in the Camping World Truck Series, and he's made the playoffs, which has made all of us who've known him and watched him race very proud. My guests today are Carson and Amy Hosevar. It's going to be the first of what I hope will be several interviews with a mom and her driver, son or daughter. And so I wanted to start with the people that I knew the best. And since Carson's made the playoffs and is in the running for rookie of the year, and they were here in Portage, which is close to where I'm at, we got together today and recorded a little bit of information for you to learn a little bit more about Carson and to hear from Amy, his mom, what it's like to be the mom of a young man who's been racing and has loved racing since he was about five years old. I hope you enjoy this podcast and I hope that you will follow and subscribe to this podcast so that we can continue to bring you more stories. So Amy, Carson's 18. He's loved racing, I know, for a long time. So why don't you tell us, when did it start? How old was he? What, what got Carson into racing? Well, he, started, he actually started watching it when he was just a baby, watching it on TV. He liked watching the cars go around with, the, with all the colors and things like that. Our goldsmith that worked for us loved racing and introduced it to him. He'd come over and watch. And then when he was probably three, I think he started, we started going to races with him and he liked to watch. So he went to Kalamazoo Speedway and watched and, and just started following all the cars and, and, and drivers. And then my husband decided that since he liked it so much, we would sponsor a car. So he just put our store name on it for, you know, for him to follow a driver. And then um, that was Mark Shook, and he came to our store to do a driver appearance. And he was going to go to practice that day after he did the appearance. So Brett's like, well, can I go watch? And so then we would go watch. On that Saturday, we watched. We watched. We got there at like 1 o'clock. We watched all day long practice. Had to stay, watch all the races, and got home at 11. Well, we did that every single Saturday after that. And so he just kept following every single driver and then it turned into, we were owning cars. So then we had drivers who raced for us and he got to follow all of them. So, and then the one driver that we sponsored, he says, well, you know, my little brother drives cars. And he said, what do you mean he drives cars? He's like, well, he's, Will was eight, nine, you know, nine at the time of the week. And so he's like, well, he drives quarter midgets. And we're like, what's a quarter midget? And they said, well, why don't you come out to dad's shop and just take a look at them? I'm like, okay. So needless to say, he went out to visit them. By the time he got home, he's like, oh, can I try this? And I'm like, well, we can look into it. So we looked into it and they had to try a ride. So we did a couple of those. We actually went to Florida and he did a try, you know, they actually did a training school. So he did that. And he just, just fell in love with it. We bought him a car. And before we knew it, we had two cars. And it just kept escalating after that. And he raced all over the country. And we had five cars. And Will had five cars. And he just has continued and continued to love racing. So I, you know, I followed Carson for a while. As we know, he, when he was younger, raced against my granddaughters. And, yep. and the big deal, if you beat Carson at the little Kalamazoo Speedway, that was a big deal for anybody. Right. Because Carson has a lot of championships in the quarter midget. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, one of you. Go ahead. Uh, you know, we won a lot of races, or at least I did, and uh, traveled the Nashville circuit, became winning as driver, um, ever do it in USPAC. So, you know, it was a big deal, especially, you know, little track being, little Kalamazoo being home. Um, you know, I knew that place like the back of my hand, so it was, you know, really tough to, to beat me there, um, especially on the, on the regional. Yeah, absolutely. But, and how many years did you race quarter midgets? Do you know for sure? 
Um, he started in 2009 and retired in 2015. So six years yep. he raced quarter midgets. And I know you raced all over the place because I know you raced. Sorry about the noise, but we're sitting outside and the people next door decided they were going to mow their yard and weed eat. So we're going to have to talk a little bit louder. But um, it's just like being at the racetrack, you know, when you're trying to do an interview. Oh, right. of course. Okay. There we go. So Carson raced quarter midgets about six years, and then what was the next step after that? And well, as last year of quarter midgets, we did a combination of midgets and outlaw late models. So we did both because during the winter, you went down and tested with Johnny Benson at Hickory every other weekend to practice a late model before he ever was thought about racing one. So he practiced every single weekend, all from like October to March, practicing and making sure he was able to race it. So that last year we did both. We raced outlaws, then we raced midgets, we raced quarter midgets. So he was always in a car every single weekend. Yeah. And then the following year, in 2016, we raced outlaw late models in super late models every other weekend at Berlin because that's the way they had it set up that week that when they switched over. Okay. So you went from quarter midgets basically into a outlaw late model. Yep. And how old were you? Thirteen. Yeah. So you weren't even old enough to do it, were you? Well, no, I was twelve outlaw. actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you were twelve in an outlaw late model. So so a lot of the tracks don't let you run at twelve. So how did how did you get around that? What did you have to do? Uh, well, they weren't NASCAR sanctioned, so they had their own insurance, so it was pretty easy in that step, just being able to be approved and not tear up stuff and not be stupid or anything. Yeah. Um, was, was mainly the only requirement. Okay. Well, and you had backing from Johnny, who, yeah. who vouched for you, the fact that he, because Johnny was actually taking care of the outlaw and drove up every week with the car. Okay. So he was actually racing, you know, as Johnny was his crew chief and racing for Johnny you know, as far as that go at Berlin. And then the following year we switched and raced both of them and because it was a lot of work for Johnny to have to drive up every weekend too. Well, and so that brought the credibility for Carson. Right. It wasn't just somebody out of the blue thinking they knew how to drive, which, you know, we see that all the time at racetracks. People right. that think they know how to drive and maybe they really should should go back and get some training. But anyway, um, so what, what was the hardest thing to learn, to go from those quarter midgets here, you were so successful, and then you get into what we call a big car. What, you know, what was the hardest thing for you when you did that? Or uh, was it hard? I mean, I guess the hardest part was relearning everything. Um, it's all big, bigger scale, slower in the terms of the, the track is, you know, 15, 16 seconds versus four seconds. Mm -hmm. um, going a lot faster um, you know the cars are a lot wider so you got to know exactly where your right side is back bumper front bumper um, compared to everybody else so it was just relearning everything um, yeah. from the start and and how long of a learning curve do you think that really took you though probably about a year and a half yeah okay and so when you were out on the track and you're 12 13 years old how many old guys were like, I'm going to show this kid. I mean, did you have any of that where some of the older guys didn't appreciate a young kid who was pretty successful? Did you ever have any issues like that? Uh, probably. I just don't really remember them or don't, don't know them. It was always probably not to my face. But, yeah, there's probably a lot of instances. Okay. Because girls run into that, you know, a lot where they're racing, you know, other boys or they're racing – men who could be two three times their age and they they deal with that a lot and i just kind of figured as a young kid there were probably some guys who had their feelings hurt or whatever that you were passing them on the track so yep they did and luckily you know it, that's where parents came into play or his crew chiefs came into play so they went they there was that buffer for you know that you did with the kids so you, you, you know your crew chief would buffer that out. Yeah. So before they ever got to him, they had to go through that. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's good. And I think that happens a lot, I think, too, with the girls that I talk to. They they don't often get to the actual girl, but right. they get to the parents. And it's usually the parents that are, you know, especially when it's kids raising, it's the parents that are having the issues, not the kids. Correct. You know, the kids are all friends on and off the track. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's an issue, I think, in racing, no matter what. So what's your favorite thing about driving a race car? Uh, I don't know. I, I've gotten asked this question a lot. I just don't know how to answer it yet. Um, I don't think anybody really does. It's just something about it that that's really just enjoyable. Um, you know, being on the edge of, you know, out of control while still being in control going 180 is just, just fun. Yeah. When you get out of the car after you've been going 180 and then you get your car to drive home, what kind of driver are you? Uh, I mean, my mom's sitting here, so I'm very, <laughs> No, very pretend alive, not. Pretend. Line. <laughs> I want to know the All truth. regulations. No. Um, I mean, do you I have mean, a most tendency? Most of the time, I don't, I don't get to drive. I, I, there's only really one instance at Charlotte that I actually drove right after the race. Normally, I'm passed out. In the backseat? In, in the back seat or something. Yeah. And. I only went like 20 minutes and it was basically a race between me and my crew chief if we could get to dinner faster. Okay. Right. So we're going to leave that as it is, not go any farther there. So, um, yeah. So why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, everybody that wants to be in NASCAR. Eat girls, they want to be the next NASCAR driver. You know, everybody's got that goal. So when did you think, start thinking, hey, maybe I'm good enough to actually be a NASCAR, be a NASCAR truck driver? Uh, I mean, it was always the, the goal. I, I don't know when it really came in my mind that, you know, I could really do this. Um, I don't know if it was in my mind that I could really do it even when I got the trucks. Um, you know, you got to win and, and, and then you know you can do it or at least be close to wins. And once, you know, we got close and are in contention and now in the playoffs, I think that really proved it myself yeah because you had a really good race and i you know they they all blend together for me but i know race car drivers remember every race and every turn and everything that happened so the race where you got second not too long ago where was that charlotte, charlotte. so you were really close to winning that race and if I, if any of us had had anything to do about it with our cheering you would have won it easily but how you know is it worse to get second or to get 10th? I mean, is it harder when you're so close and you don't get it? It's it's harder in the moment to finish second, but it's definitely easier come Monday finishing second than 10th. Yeah. Yeah. It's the emotions of the moment. And then when you look back, you say, hey, you know what? I did pretty good. Right? That's right. So how many truck races have you actually raced in? Do you, do you know the number? Should Roughly? Like 19. So 19 races. And you were already close to second. You've made the playoffs. There's guys who race for years that don't have the success that you've already had. Um, how does that make you feel? You know, does that give you more confidence as a younger person that I've got a lot of years that I can really do really well at this? Uh, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Um, the sport's tough. It'll, it'll chew you up and spit you right back out. So, I mean, you got to be really good that year, not knowing that the next year, you know, you might not have those years, um, you just never know. So it's, it's tough, but uh, the pressure's on for sure. Yeah. And they've already signed you for next year. So that's a big relief, isn't it? Yeah. Getting that done. Yeah. That's big. Um, it's big, big having uh, a plan for next year. And, and I think I'm the first or I know I was the first to be announced for next year, and I think yeah. there's only two or three that are announced even. So right. there's a lot of people right now that I'm racing with that don't even know what they're doing. Right. And a lot of those have been racing a lot longer than you, and they don't have a plan. And so that is the scary thing about racing. It's not like being a teacher where you have tenure and you know you're coming back or whatever. Racing, you can be, you can be out just as quickly as you're in, really. Okay. And so that's why, you know, how you do on the track is important, but I also think how you are off the track is important as well. What do you, what do you think about that? Like, I know how you are on the track. So 
What about behavior off the track? Is that part of the package that drivers and teams are looking for? Yeah, I mean, you gotta sell sponsorship too. That's half the half the battle. And you're presentable, and, and a brand likes you, and, and you fit their mold, and, and that behavior style it uh, that goes a long way. It makes your job a lot easier uh, to market yourself. Right. So, are the hats part of your market? All the hats you wear? No, I, it's just something fun I did. Accidentally, uh, really started, and, and that's where I'm continuing it because I, I just have too much fun to do it. I would I wouldn't want to stop. It's been fun to watch that. Now, I wasn't crazy about the Waffle House hat. Hopefully, they're not your sponsor because I had just eaten at one of them the night or two before you wore that hat, and it was not a good experience. I'm like, Carson, I can't, I can't uh, approve that post with that Waffle <laughs> hat on. But has anybody sent you any fun hats? Yeah, uh, I've gotten two. Um, I, I still can't say what they are because I haven't worn them. Yeah, I was going to say, so are we going to see them? Are you going to wear yeah, them? Yeah, I got one for Darlington and one that is a surprise to me even that I haven't got yet, but I know it's worth it. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to check and look into the hats now when yeah, I'm out shopping. You the one from Darlington? Uh, NASCAR Chasm on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's been fun. So um, I'm, I'm excited to see what those hats look like. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, it was a surprise to me. I had no idea either. You know, I went to check in at, at the last race, and they were like, so what's he wearing? I said, I have no idea. We'll see it when I uh, yeah. see it on the grid. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. You know, that's and that's the kind of thing, honestly, that fans love mm -hmm. because they can identify with the fact that you love fun hats or that you wear Nikes and they're all different or, you know, whatever it is that might set you apart from somebody else. And that's how you get more fans, too, is by being mm -hmm. just a normal kid, having fun, wearing these goofy hats, and then um, just just showing, you know, what you can do on the track, too. You're getting a lot more fans as well. So yep. when you're not racing, which I know isn't very often, <laughs> um, what do you like to do besides that? Or um, do you have anything that you like to do? Uh, I like to do, I like to play basketball at the shop. We started doing that when we got a hoop. Um, I just like to just do anything, work out, whatever, um, just to feel like I'm doing something, but um, really nothing compared to racing. Yeah, because I know when, as a younger kid, you know, when you were racing quarter midgets, I think you raced all winter long, didn't you? Oh, yeah. All over the place, yeah. yeah. 42 weekends a year. 42 weekends a year. So, Mom, how do you handle that? I know you work at your family business. How do you manage to travel? Because he was too young to go by himself. How did you manage to run your home? You've got a beautiful big home. Run your home. Run, you know, Carson was in school. He just graduated this yeah. year. He was homeschooled, though, correct? Or he, online schooled? He online high school. Online, online high school. Yep. Okay. Yep. So he, had, he did home, He did online regular school through, through virtual. Yeah. Through high school. But he did actually go to school up until then. Okay, so, so he was going to school, and then what if you were going to go somewhere and race? How um, did you manage that? Well, most time we would we would leave Friday afternoon as soon as we would, we could fly out. We would fly red eyes home, or we would drive if, if it was out west. We'd fly the red eye first thing Sunday morning. He'd go if we got in, in at nine. He's going straight to school. He'd yeah. sleep. He'd do all his schoolwork on the road. Most of his teachers were really good about giving him his homework ahead of time, taking the test before we left. Um, you know, if he needed to miss something, you know, most of the time they would let him make it up as long as he, you know, did it like Monday when he got back and things like that. So they were really good about doing that. But we tried not to miss very many days as possible. Right. Like, so we drove, you know, if it was close, we drove straight back. We drove everywhere we could. And we still do that. I mean, we have to race somewhere and drive in all night long to get to the next track or get home for work. So it's, we, everybody, even this past weekend at Gate, you know, we raced Gateway on Friday. Well, we raced well in on Saturday at home while I drove all night to get back. And everybody's like, well, when we got to Berlin, they're like, so how was the flight? I'm like, what flight? I drove all night long. I'm like, what do you mean fly? We don't fly, we drive. And I think that's something that people just, who don't really know how it works 
like you see, you know, like I just watched the documentary about Chase Elliott, which was really good, by the way. And he has he has his pilot's license and he flies here and there. That doesn't work for us here, does it? Because no. we we typically any of us have to drive pretty much where we want to go unless it's very far away. So you were at Gateway on Friday night, which is down by St. Louis. And then how many hours is that home to, to Kalamazoo Portage? It is basically about seven hours. So seven hours, plus, you know, you got to stop and wake yourself up a couple times. Correct. And how much help was Carson on that drive? Oh, he didn't even make it outside the track. So he was sound asleep as soon as the I pulled out of the track. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, even driving home from there, it lost an hour for central time to eastern time and then we had a power out so right you have to accommodate that and sometimes getting out of the track can be time consuming because you're stuck in the infield and you're waiting to get out like nashville i drove all night home from nashville because we were racing somewhere else the next day from nashville even and it was a very long out yeah. of the track it is it is a long it's a lot of things that parents do or other people involved to make sure that carson gets where he needs to be on time rested because he needs to be rested if he's going to be driving right. a race car at 100 and however many miles an hour right. so um i think it's something that people don't think about they just think that it's a glorious life and everything's wonderful and they don't think about the fact that you or somebody's driving him back and forth and and you know it's not you know it's hot it's you're standing on asphalt all day long in a race suit or whatever it might be right you know there's a lot of wonderful things about racing but it's not everything 100%, is it? That's right. There's, there's some things that are not, not fun about it. No, there's, there's tough days, there's crashes, you know, there's, there's um, you know, deals falling through, um, you, you know, the whole, whole, whole ordeal. And so there's definitely bad days um, like any other job. So what do you do on a bad day? How do you deal with that? I, I guess I, I don't know. It's just circumstantial. Um, and just trying to cope and know that, you know, there'll be other good days that uh, will make up. Yeah. And, and, you know, honestly, when I look at you and you're, you know, you're young, you're 18 years old, you're still a kid in my mind. And, Ooh. and you don't have the experience of maybe going through some rough patches like parents do or people that are older. And so I think that's a life lesson that he's learning that, you know, unfortunately, we all have to learn, don't we, that every day's not rosy and, and that we have to learn how to deal with adversity and then how to come back from it and, and make sure that tomorrow's going to be better and we're going to keep moving forward, right? Not backwards. So this last weekend, we had a couple, couple things that didn't go as well as we had hoped for you. And, and so, you know, when things like that happen on the track, like I was, I was a little impressed I'm not a little impressed. I was impressed with you on on Friday night because um, that was a Carson I hadn't always seen. I think you were more bold about how you were feeling about your car, and um, and you know I in the past I see you as more quiet. You don't always say a whole lot, and so are are you starting to like kind of have a voice or say, hey, this is what I need in my car. Are you starting to be more proactive about things like that? Uh, I mean, I guess um, I, I feel like everybody is, is more talkative because their adrenaline's so high in the middle of a race. I've never really done an interview, you know, have a race stop at halfway and, and do an interview. So I guess I guess that was part of it, and uh, you know, the adrenaline was still high, and yeah. all I was focused on was what we had to do to gain 15 more spots right and and i don't remember where you were running at the time maybe like 15th 14th but you ended up eighth as there was a bunch of other crashes happened and you were able to maneuver through and finish eighth which top 10 i always say if you're in the top 10 you're doing good you know like to be first but we'll take the we'll take the top 10 any chance you get right yeah yeah more than anything it's just everybody else like you said um had issues or wrecked and, and we didn't um you know we had damage and got hindered a little bit but still eighth compared to everybody else's 20th or 30th in the playoffs it's, it's a big point stay yeah it was a big point stay so where are you right now in the points seven uh 13 points in, above the cut line okay so you're seventh out of 10, ten. 
seventh out of 10. So that's, that's good. And then, so every race you're going to earn, depending on your finish, you earn a certain amount of points, right? Yes. And so the next you have, where are you going to be racing next? And when's the end of the first round? Darlington is next week. Um, and then the end is uh, Bristol, which would be a few weeks later. Yeah, it's the weekend, I think, of the 18th of September. So you've got a little bit of time, and then they'll lose, then two drivers will drop out. Yep. And then you'll go on from there, and will there be two more rounds? Uh, there's just one more. Just, or, well, there's uh, three more races, which would go from eight to four. Which okay. Would be the okay. All right. And then the final round is Phoenix. It's Phoenix. And that's, as you know, I go to Phoenix a lot. That's, that's probably the track I've been to more than anything because my daughter's living there. So I already have my tickets to watch the races in Phoenix and, and I'll be in the stands in the, now what I'm waiting for, Amy, is my Carson shirt. I know. Because, and I just got it finally approved yesterday. Because I, I, uh, I haven't got a Carson host of our shirt yet. And I've been waiting for that. And yep. so I'll yep. have that on at Phoenix. I promise you for that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's so fun to see him progress and what he's done. And to be in the playoffs, how does that, how does being in the playoffs, you know, what's, been, what's been good about that? What's been exciting about, Hey, I made the playoffs my first, really my first year. Uh, more than anything is you're racing for something still. Everybody yeah. else that didn't make the playoffs, you know, they're just waiting on next year. You know, they're just, they're just another, another round in the circus, um, you know, I guess, or another act in the circus. Yeah. Well, you know, they're not, they're not running for a championship. Or, or anything like that um you know they're out just trying to win win a race and try and help yeah. their their draft or uh, try and gain sponsors or whatever um and bragging rights really we're, yeah. we're, we're all racing for a championship in the playoffs and you know, there's still a, a bigger prize at the end of the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah absolutely and how does how do you feel you and your husband i know he's not here scott we can't really ask him but you can speak for him too like I know you have to be super proud of Carson, both on and off the track, but being the parent, you know, you've gone through the ups and downs, you've gone through the long nights of driving and, you know, it's not free for him to race. We know yeah. that you've gone through, you know, lots of support there with resources for him to drive, but to see him have this success and be there, what does that mean to you and your husband? It means the world that, I mean, this is what he's always wanted to do. So we've always backed him in what he's wanted to do. I mean, it, he did try every other sport under the sun and he finally got to the point where mom, do I really need to play soccer anymore? I really don't like it, you know, and I just want to race. And so that was what he wanted to do. And you can just see that he really put in the commitment. I mean, he would practice four days a week, 450 laps. He would go every single weekend. I mean, he was always, watching videos so he's always back tracking everything from you know any race he can possibly see and footage and things so it was just that's all he did he focused and, and he still does he focuses everything on racing so when somebody's got that and they're willing to put in the time you as a parent you try to support them in what they do whether it be you know football to tennis to you know golf whatever you do support your child. So that's what we've done. And, and, and as long as he's got the drive and the passion and wants to do it, then we'll just keep going forward. And luckily with Nice Motorsports, they are backing him too and, and giving him the opportunities. They gave him the opportunity and, and then, you know, continued and brought him back for a full season this year and they've already signed him for next year. So it's just a, a work in progress and hope, you know, and he's, running for rookie of the year as well as now in the playoffs right so i i really hesitated to bring that up because i didn't want to jinx you but you are running for rookie of the year since your mom brought it up I'm, it's okay so <laughs> i i'm not the one that jinxed you okay so um who is there anybody close even uh chandler in the 18 is in the same round as me okay um, and but he's at the end he's he's 10 um, okay he's like 20 something behind so if he misses the next round and I make it, um, yeah. you know, it's basically locked up, but it all depends on who gets further in the playoffs. Okay. And so other than, you know, that's a great honor and everything, um, it, it just helps you down the road, doesn't it? To say, hey, I was rookie of the year and, 
it's just another thing to add to that resume, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, Al Nice wanted a rookie of the year. He's never done that. He wanted to check that off his, his list. So to be able to, to do that for him, or at least be close so far, um, will be uh, will be big. And, you know, we're focused on the championship, but right. rookie of the year is still uh, a big accomplishment. Yeah, it would be. Well, we're all cheering for you for sure. Has there ever been a day that you were like, I really don't want to go to the racetrack? No, no, not, not, not at all, really. You know, a bad day at the racetrack is better than any other day. That's true. That's true. I agree with you there. I'd rather be there than anybody anywhere else, honestly. Even when it's really hot and, and all that, I still, I can handle the heat if I'm at the racetrack. Otherwise, it's like, no, I don't, I don't, I want to be inside where it's cool, you know? So that's kind of how I feel too. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's him to a T. So <laughs> what's your, what are your goals? We're, we're, you know, five, 10 years from now, I'm going to be in the nursing home watching you race. Tell me where where am I going to see you racing? Uh, hopefully in Cup. That's the ultimate goal. But uh, otherwise, hopefully still in, in the top three series of NASCAR, whether that's Cup truck or Xfinity. Yeah, yeah. So personally, I really, of course, I love the Cup cars, but I really love the trucks. They're my they're really my favorite to watch, and I think partly because it's not quite as professional. You never know what's going to happen with those you know, mostly kids driving. And, and I really, I've always loved the trucks. Um, Xfinity is okay. I'm liking it more. You know, I got a, I got a couple friends in there now that are driving. So that makes a difference. And then of course, you know, the cup is the ultimate, you know, place that everybody wants to get to. And I, I'm sure I'm confident you're going to get there. I have no doubt about that. So a um, couple, couple of fun questions. So I, I just recently read that you have a nickname. What's your nickname and how did you get it? Uh, they call me Gumby in the shop. Um, I don't really know where it came from, but they just started calling me it like every other nickname. It just comes from something that nobody can really tell who really started it or anything. Yeah. But, uh, just kind of stuck in the shop at least. And, and that's, uh, that's the nickname right now. Yeah. And then what's your favorite place to eat? Applebee's. Yeah. If you, if you don't know that about Carson, you don't know anything because he's always loved Applebee's. And what's your go-to meal at Applebee's? Uh, the three cheese penne. Uh, that, that's definitely my favorite with chicken and the, uh, the tomatoes on the side. Okay. Because, you know, uh, Walker Hayes sang about Applebee's in his song that everybody was dancing to. And uh, Applebee's had to put the oreo parfait thing back on the menu because so many people were asking for it so oh i hope the three cheese penne is still on the menu because otherwise they're gonna be like well if carson likes it then I, that's what i want to order so anyway that's fun so amy any, any first you any last thoughts or anything i haven't talked to you about about carson the, his racing career your family anything mm. you'd like to share about what it's what it's like to be the mom of a, a young man that's racing in the truck series uh, I don't know um, do you ever get like nervous or scared oh, when he's racing I, I'm, I, I've been watching him since he was little so I mean I'm, I'm the one who, I'm, 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 I'm this strange parent who actually pushed him to, you know over dad to allow him to race and, and, and is the one who always goes faster than dad um, but I get restarts are my worst I, I don't like restarts and I don't think everybody else thinks they're great because things happen but that for a mom that's the worst thing to watch is a restart I don't care what you do it's you 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 just hope you make it through and if they're you if you're a wreck all you do is look for the number and hope you made it through so but he's safe in where what he's in he's been safe since he was little I had never any issues with him racing when he was six seven years old you know in, in any car so in the truck I have no issues whatsoever I know he's going to be fine so that problem I don't have so it's just those restarts oh. yeah they can be hairy that's for sure we've seen that this year in many of the series the restarts have been nuts oh yeah absolutely nuts all the time yeah but that's what people like. That that's why people, people like. that's, that's why people buy tickets or they watch on TV. That is. <laughs> so Carson, any any thoughts, any last words that you want to share with us? I got nothing. You got nothing? <laughs> no, I don't really got anything. I covered uh, all the 
all the bases. Yeah. You know, just hopefully, uh, win rookie of the year and win a, win a championship. Ultimately. Yeah. yeah. If you got a kid who wants to race, there's lots of opportunities out there. I mean, like I said, I mean, between quarter midgets and, you know, and a go kart, I mean, we went quarter midgets just because of roll cages and we thought it was safer, you know, but lots of people run go karts and all sorts of other stuff. But I mean, there's lots of opportunities for kids to get started. And it's a fun family sport and you do it as a family. That's the biggest thing, you know, it's all involved. Yeah, I agree. We we had a little conversation before we recorded today about about you know a lot of sports are fun and the but it's not the family atmosphere nope. as racing. You know, we talk about our racing family. You know, I consider you guys my race family. We're not related. We're you know we don't go to dinner together, but you're still my race family. Yep. And and I feel that way about so many people. I know you guys do too. Right. You know, the people that have supported you all these years. And if anything good or bad happens, they're the first ones to say, hey, good job, or what can I do to help? And that means more to me, really, to be involved with racing than anything, is the people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and the, the feeling of family. Right. I mean, and when we first started, like I said, when we first started, and we did, you know, we built a quarter midget track, and we work it. He still helps flag, race direct, things like that. And I'm there when I'm home. So every single one of those kids, I still consider my kids. Yeah. So it's, they are, they are part of your family. I mean, yeah. The racing industry is that way. We are a big, huge, humongous family. Yeah. And that track's still going strong. Um, I watched some kids racing the other night when I was at Kalamazoo and they were racing around that track and it brought back memories of when I saw Carson racing there and I saw my granddaughters race there and lots of other people. And, and it's great that we've got, uh, the little Kalamazoo Speedway, and right next door is Kalamazoo Speedway, or what we refer to as the big track. The big track. The yep. big track. So you go from quarter minutes to a big car on the big track, and that's kind of how it is yep. here in Kalamazoo. But um, I just want to thank you guys for giving me some time. I know, yeah. I know there's a lot going on in your life right now, Carson. Lots to think about, lots to do, a lot of places to be, but um, I really appreciate that you gave me some time to sit here in your backyard, beautiful landscaping. Um, thank goodness they quit mowing behind us. And, and for Amy, for you to take the time and, and do our first mother driver interview, we're going to do some more of these, but you were my first choice. And so um, thanks. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Couldn't produce this podcast without our many sponsors. So at this time, let's take a listen to one of our amazing partners. If you're looking to buy, sell, or trade the stuff that strokes your engine, anything from truck parts to classic and muscle cars, RVs to hot rods, and everything in between, then check out the official classifieds at RacingJunk.com. RacingJunk.com is the world's number one online racing and performance marketplace, the ultimate one-stop shop where you'll find what you need to rock your ride. If it belongs in your garage, it's for sale on RacingJunk.com. Log in to RacingJunk.com to find the gear you're looking for, sell your extra stuff, keep up on racing news and tech tips, and more. Again, that's RacingJunk.com. Thank you for listening to Racing Girls Rock Podcast. Follow us on Facebook at International Women's Motorsports Association or on Instagram and Twitter at the IWMA Nation. And if you know someone that should be on our show, drop us an email at IWMA Nation at gmail.com. <laughs>